Okay, they're going to sell their house through the discount broker, right? But then they're going to buy a house, right? So if you do your job and don't make it a big thing and get mad at them for using somebody else, maybe you still get the sale when they buy. So it doesn't matter because you're not trying to do the deal. You're trying to help them. And if they feel like that's what's best for them, I want them to go there. Is when people call you when they're ready to do something and there's no competition when people call me they've been getting my email for five years they're, they're not going to call any other agents they're only going to deal with me and so it creates loyalty as well as uh, you know build strong relationships so um, I think that that's what you guys uh, you know should really kind of think about uh, and it doesn't have to be a weekly email, but you have to have to stay in front of people on a consistent basis to stay relative and just make sure that you're not trying to pressure anybody into doing anything, but be there when they when they get ready. Make sense? Makes sense. Thank you guys. <laughs>
and it just solidifies one of your best features is your communication. Yeah. By not doing that, you're, yeah. I, I feel you're probably. So you're saying that send them videos of you speaking, you mean, about well, the market? Well, it's not so much. Uh, or personal well, you, emails like yeah. bomb bomb and stuff? Well, you could do the podcast, you know, say a possibly a short five minute or 10 minute podcast for your weekly thing and then yeah. have all the detail yeah. associated. But that would make it much more, and it remind them, of, oh, look, Ricky's gotten gray, or Ricky's doing this, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And anyway, it's it's a great thing to <clears throat> to embrace people more. So you're saying in my weekly email that I should do more video, uh, or have more audio or video? No, no I, video? I think it's a composite thing. You have to think if you want to be face to face. Yeah. On it. Um, I'm a, well, I'm not a licensed mortgage broker, but I'm not practicing, but there's just these guys in California, every day they have like a show, a podcast. Yeah. And um, I think it's a great idea. And right? I think you so, all people. So you guys, you know, good idea, you know, go, go execute. Here's the thing, guys, I get you. Everything works, everything, like for sale by owners, door knocking, internet leads, all of it works, right? The video and the email, let's mix that, let's, let's mix this. Who cares, right? Just do it. Just just go do it and create results, right? Create relationships and do it. Um, you know, Constant Contact does not have the ability to embed a video. I can link videos. I can link videos to YouTube and I can do, you know, it's not like bomb bomb, bomb bomb embeds a video in the email. You can watch it right there on the email, you know. Um, I, I just started doing social media a year ago. I, I, I'm one of those, like, I'm actually kind of a really, I, I really like the position I'm in because I've had to build my business the old school way, right? Completely old school. And now, but I'm young enough to understand technology and, and now I'm, I'm, I'm all in. And so I've got the best of both worlds. I'm not just tech, right? And I'm not just making phone calls. Right now, now I'm a combination of both sides and really killing it on, on, from both ends. I can't do everything. Do I want to try doing the? I've, I've been thinking about doing like videos on Facebook, linking it through my email, and doing all kinds of stuff. I'll get to it, you know. Um, but uh, you know, very good point. Try it, guys. What's up, Mr. Ricky? Uh, thank you for everything. Got a question for you. As a part-time agent now and wanting to transition into full-time, what would be your suggestions to make that happen ASAP? You know, and then once I do that, what would you recommend to really, really crush it right off the bat? Well, uh, I mean, going from part-time to full-time, my general advice is always replace your income with real estate until you, you know, before you make the move. Because I don't know if you have a family that you have to support, right? Yeah, so you can't just go cold turkey and just risk <laughs> everything on real estate when you're not making any money in real estate. So you have to replace your income with your day job with real estate before you make the switch. So what, what hours do you work your day job? I uh, work pretty much 9 to 6 every day, uh, sometimes 8 to 6 and what have you. So, so, so here's the thing. I sell real estate for a living, right? But I'm a part-time speaker, right? So how do I do that? I sell real estate all day, and then I work on my speaking stuff all night, right? And so for you, what I would do is you get off at six. Yes, sir. This is what I would do. I would have all my phone numbers ready, and I would start calling them on my drive home from work. I would literally call people in my car on my way home because you don't want to wait too late. You, know, you can't call them at seven once you get home. You know, six is getting kind of late already. But you need to make like five calls at least, or five or 10 calls on your way home, right? Um, have them in your phone ready where you don't have to dial the numbers. Go ahead and dial them and hit send and then in. And that way when you get in there, you can just hit send. Okay, do the talk to them, send. You know, that way you're not getting in a wreck. But, but, but I mean, being efficient though, right? Like winners don't, winners make it happen. They just make it happen. Like there's no uh, secret or there's no like equation. Like they just make it happen. Um, a lot of stuff, like the speaking stuff for me has been a lot of work, 
for nothing up to this point, right? Um, same thing with real estate. You have to risk your time for the fact that you really want this, you really want to help people, and that you're going to make it happen. And so you just got to tell yourself that I'm going to make this happen, period, right? Like, the, I believe that there's four keys to long-term success. The first key is you got to believe, right? If you don't believe, you're dead right there. And when I say believe, 100% fully committed, no other options. And so in your mind, you're already the number one agent. That's the way you should be thinking. I'm, I'm, I am the number one agent, right? Even though you're not there yet, you are in your mind. Like me, I'm the number one real estate speaker in the world already, right? I know that, right? The second part is work hard. So I don't know you, but believe, work hard, adapt, and be patient. See, the people that believe, they're everywhere. People that believe and work hard, not very many. People that believe, work hard, and adapt, very few. People that believe, work hard, adapt, and are patient. <laughs> the patience part was my biggest straw because I always believe, work hard, and adapted. But the patience part was the part that I had trouble with. I, uh, in 2014, I did 600K. I wanted to do a million the next year. I did this huge plan. I'm going to do this, 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 and this, and I'm going to get there. The next year, January rolls around. I'm trying to put the pieces in place, February, March, and I'm looking at my income, and I'm saying, I'm going to make the same amount of money this year as I made last year, and I start really getting down on myself, really down on myself, and, and that's really a bad place to be. So I started searching again. I want to know what I'm doing wrong. You know, why, what's wrong with me? Why can't I do this? And so I got a coach. Long story short, I realized that I'm doing great. Yeah, 600K is awesome. But the thing from 600 to a million is, is patience. Like I'm doing all I can do. Guys, to reach your full potential is, I refer to it like a cup, right? Everybody has a different size cup. Your cup represents how much you can handle. How much business can you handle? Because some agents have a couple things under contract, it blows their whole day. And I don't get that. I've never understood how two listings and one pending takes up 40 hours in a week. So to me, like I, I keep 20, 15 to 20 properties under contract, 50 to 60 listings at all times. That's, that's kind of my cup. I can handle maybe a little more, but, but what you have to do is overwhelm yourself with business make 2,000 calls or you know whatever you do to get business. See, people are scared to overwhelm because they don't want to reduce their customer service, right? They're scared they're gonna, they're gonna give up some of their customer service, but things that scare you, you probably need to do, right? So overwhelm yourself, find out where your breaking point is. How much can you handle, right? And then once you know that, until you overwhelm yourself, you don't know how much you can handle. So you have to take that leap Overwhelm yourself, figure out how much you can handle, and then stay there. That's how you reach your full potential, keeping as much as you can handle at all times. So, and it's author, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I just think that making it happen with no excuses is the big punchline for you, but making calls in your way home could be really big, and um, put everything you got into it from that six o'clock to eight o'clock or if you spend time with your family you make calls you get home you spend that time with your family you put them to bed now you have an hour to develop the email write some letters do some postcards strategize study the market see what the new listings were that came up to these see, see what's under contract target the neighborhood that you want to go after right plot right closings are happening every day every single day so it's not the market, right? They're happening. It's, it's you. You haven't figured out how to make it happen, right? And it's all about relationships. What was your, uh, you say four keys to success. I got believe in yourself, work hard, adapt, patience. Is it two more or is that the four? No, that's four. Okay. <laughs> work hard, adapt, patience. Yeah. Yeah. Two, three, and four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Believe, work hard, adapt. Most of you guys, I, I can talk to anyone in here for five minutes that is not successful or not as successful as they want to be. I can have a five minute conversation with you and tell you which of these four things you're lacking in. 
Because it boils down to these four things, period. And most of you, it's the adapting part. It's the patience, of course, but you don't get to patience until you learn how to adapt. That's after adapt. Most of you get here, here, but the adapting part is the part that most people stumble. How hard was it for you to adapt? I've always been an adapter. I adapt immediately to everything. I could come in this market right here and crush all of you guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, Alabama. Here's the thing, too. Here's the thing. The agents, you know, I have a thousand or two thousand agents who follow me and all this stuff and ask me questions and and something I get. The most the most question I get is about voicemails, you know which is silly, because it's just like, tell them who you are and what you're calling about and call you back. Um, use voicemails as a branding tool. Don't think of it as, I gotta figure out how to say something special to make them call me back. Don't worry about them calling you back. Just use it as a branding tool where you know they heard your name and number and everything. But uh, another, another big one is open houses. Open houses aren't big in my market at all, for whatever reason, but it's, and they're like, oh, you don't do open houses, you know? They're like thinking, what, what is it? You're not even a realtor. Well, if I were in a market where I'm losing listings because I'm not doing open houses, I'll now be the open house king. If, if I'm in a market where horse farms take two years to sell um, and you got to spend $3,000 to market it, I'm going to be the horse marketing uh, pricing king. I'm going to price it just right if I'm going to spend $3,000 to market that property. I would, you know, adapting is just in my blood. To answer your question. Of me? Uh, yeah. Uh, your background, you didn't really share everything, but as far as, have you ever been uh, like a, you're a broker associate, but you've not had any agents working with you or for you? Or? I've tried, I've, I've tried to do a team one time. <laughs> I think y'all know the rest of the story. <laughs> <laughs> Another question, it, it, your Remax experience, obviously you have the great franchise and the tools and so forth, but before that you operated without the, the big franchise. Yeah. Could you sort of show, tell your thoughts about the pros and the cons and what advantages? You Nothing. Have? Nothing. 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 It doesn't matter where you work, it just matters how hard you work, okay. right? And so, like, with a small company, you're going to eventually plateau, and you're just going to feel that pressure on your shoulders, like, i got to go somewhere else to learn something new or to have more exposure or so forth, and that's when you move to the big brand. But until then, it doesn't matter. If you're building your business, who cares mm -hmm. where you're at? It doesn't matter. You have, to learn, you have to learn how to make people feel comfortable with you. That's it. That's it. Tone, body language, um, you know, what you're about, who you really are as a person. That's what matters, not the company. Yeah. They're gonna like you for you, not because of where you work. Or how, they don't care how many you sold, if they like you. But if you come to them kind of nervous, how much have you sold? <laughs> That's when you get that question, when they're trying to evaluate who you are, because it sounds like you just wanna do a deal, right? So people think, oh, how can I break into the market? I haven't sold anything. Well, if you're doing your, if you're doing your job of making people feel comfortable with you, you don't have to worry about that. Not an issue. Hey, I'm Tina Turner from Daytona Beach. I'm visiting. Hey, Thank, you for being. Thank you all for having me. But um, Ricky, on your telephone calls in that pre-qualification stage, when you said, um, you know, I ask them if, um, you know, if they have a relationship with a, another realtor. Yeah. Um, do you, if they say yes, my mother's in it, or yeah. yes, uh, you know, the girl that sold me the house, she did a pretty good job. Do you end the conversation right there, or do you probe them a little further to see if it's a current Just depends on the conversation, but I normally end it right there, because they've already said they're not interested in doing anything right now. Now they're saying that they got an agent, whether they're lying or not, it's like, well, they're telling you, there's two negatives there. They don't want to do anything, and they got an agent. It sounds like they just want to get off the phone. So what can you do there? You can't really do much. So what I normally say is, when they say they have an agent, I'll say, hey, well, who is it? Oh, I know that agent. You're in really good hands. Look, if there's ever anything I can do for you, let me know. Have a good day, and I'll move on. And maybe, so people change agents all the time. So maybe they see your sign, and they see this, and they see that, and then their agent didn't call them back that one time it really made them mad and they say i'm gonna call ricky so yes ma'am i have a question um 
question. You have a brand new agent, first day in the business, they sit down in front of you. What's the first thing you tell them to do and what goal settings do you have them make? I tell them to make calls, call property owners, create relationships, start sending weekly emails. Are you talking about for sale by owners or just no, property owners? No, just property, owners. property owners. Yeah, for sale by owners and expires, like I'm not against them at all, right? I am. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not. I, I don't call them. I don't think it's the most efficient way, yes. right? Um, but, you know, um, it's a high pressure situation. For sale by owners and expires, it's a high pressure. Two other agents are calling them. It's high pressure. If you're calling random owners, very low pressure. They're open. They want to talk. They want to know what's up with the market. They want to get to know you. But when you call for sale owner, they're like, oh, yeah, another realtor, you know? So it's two different ball games. A lot of people really succeed with for sale owners and expires. I know a lot of them. Um, not my game. I feel like I crush those guys because I'm long game and I want, I want width. I want quantity of clients who love me, right? Because I didn't try to pressure them. So they love me now, right? And now when they decide, they're gonna come to me. So I think the biggest thing for new agents is learning a couple things. One is that losing deals is the greatest thing that can ever happen to you, right? Too many agents take a loss and get down on their cell because they were looking at what the closing was going to do to the bank account and then they lose the deal and they think they lost the money but really they never had the money <laughs> so what a loss actually does you a, a, a seller decides to use a different agent a buyer <coughs> backed out of a contract cold feet no reason uh, whatever the case may be what happens is is very incredible the the, the biggest thing is well, not the biggest thing, but you learn something, right? That's the cliche part of losing deals, but let me tell you the biggest part of it that people don't even realize. What's more valuable than money? Knowledge. Time. You can replace your money if you lose it all tomorrow, but you can't get yesterday back. You can't replace time. It's more valuable, it's your most valuable asset. When you lose a deal, now you get future time back that you don't have to spend on that deal anymore. This is where people really, they, I lose them a little bit. The future time that you get back that you don't have to deal with signing that listing, meeting them, taking the pictures, putting the sign up, putting the lock box, dealing with the agents want to show it, negotiating the deal, going to the closing, inspection, financing. You don't have to do all that anymore on that situation. You get all those hours, hours back. And now you can take that new knowledge you got from what you, whatever you learned, why you lost the deal. Now you're a better agent because you learned something, but you got hours of your life back where you can take that new knowledge and go get five more deals in the same amount of time, right? If you realize that everything, everything in real estate is a win-win, like there's no way to lose, that's when you really start to understand if I can get that inside new agent's head then I, I think I could really have a shot at helping them succeed because they can just power through okay I'm doing deals I uh, lost that one cool okay did it um, I got that one okay I lost that one you know and just keep moving forward and you get and you understand and you take advantage of the future time you got back instead of moping you can always notice a, a losing agent always talking about the deal that got away the inspection that went bad, the financing that fell through. That's what they're talking about in the office. When I hear that, I'm like, oh, Lordy, they're not going to make it, right? <laughs> so concentrate on the deals that are working. Forget about the ones that fell, fell apart and use that future time. It's the most valuable thing in the world, and you just got some of it back. Um, okay, so I'm along the same lines. For, for newer agents or people who are trying to implement their goals and everything, is there a sort of self-help type thing where, where you, you're taking care of yourself in those moments of weakness, those overwhelming moments and those sort of moments just, where you like... Just go to my YouTube and just every time you feel bad, just... <laughs> <laughs> go to my YouTube, guys. <laughs> Thank you.
Seriously though, um, I see what you're saying, and um, yeah, it, it, it's it's all about being around people that are minded like me. Like if you can find someone to be around like me, like follow me on Instagram and YouTube. Whenever you feel bad, literally I go there because all the stuff that I'm saying is right there. And like you look and be like, oh, 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 you know, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. You see what I'm saying? All right, so if, for agents that are like new to an area or just new agents, period, where do you think the majority of time should be spent? Phone as calls. As far as phone calls? Yeah. She said, as a new agent, where, where should your time be most spent? Or even just like new to the area. What was he saying? Study your market. Okay, if you're, brand, if you're new to the area, all right. If you're new to the area, you don't know what's going on, what you need to do is study MLS for about a half a day, figure out what's going on in the market. Like pull up all the sales from the last year and figure out which price ranges are selling the best and all this stuff, right? And then target a subdivision. Say, this one's selling pretty good. It's three, 400 range. It's selling pretty good. There's 100 houses there. I wanna, I wanna start here. Then you're gonna go to all the listings, call all the listing agents and go look at all the houses, drive through there, talk to as many people as you see, really become familiar with the layout uh, and the geography and, and everything of that subdivision. Then we're gonna go to Red X, we're gonna get all the numbers, we're gonna start calling the owners. We're gonna have all the comps in front of us and we're gonna go to town. Start developing the relationships, get the emails, send weekly emails for us. Uh, so you, you talk a lot about building new relationships and doing sure. as much as possible in the volume yes. of building a new relationship. Yes. So when you have 10,000 relationships, yes. how do you still have hair on your head? If they get a weekly email from me, so I don't have to do anything. But, they call me when they get ready to do something. So when you have a lot of those interpersonal relationships working, when they all start hitting you, how do you, do you have any advice, I should say, for agents that find themselves with a large volume of good quality? I think it's a good problem to have. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, please, please give me, you know, 100 people call me at once. I'll, I'll, I'll be glad to, to sit down and make a list of all those people and start calling them one by one. It may take me three days to call them all back, but I, I welcome that scenario, you know? And like I told author, winners just make it happen. Doesn't matter, right? Just do it. Like, whenever I had my coach and I was trying to get to a million, because I, I hired the coach because I wanted him to show me how to make a million dollars. Because I was I was going to make six hundred again, um, and so he he set up this plan for me. You need it's kind of similar to the one I had before I called it. You need to make this many calls. You need to do this much. You need to do that much, right? I'm like, okay, cool, cool, cool. So I, I set it up. I'm going to go Monday. I'm going to make this many calls. Today I'm going to make this many calls. The stuff got in the way, right? Because I am making six hundred thousand. I do have a lot of deals going on. So I'm working on my deals. I can't get to the calls. So when I had my coaching call, I said I couldn't make all the. I couldn't do the calls. I know, I'm too busy. I'm like, what do I do? How do I? How do I do this? How do I manage the stuff that just comes up with deals that I have to do versus time blocking to make the calls I need to make to hit my goals? What? How? Tell me, magical coach. And he said, he said, what? All that other stuff? I said, I said, yeah. What? He said, just do it. As in, just do the stuff that you have to do, because you have to do that stuff, right? So when 100 people call you at once, you sit down, you make a list of all the people that called you, you start calling back and say, how can I help you, you know? Um, it does get hectic at times. Like, you will find yourself in some very, you know, tight situations. Like last Wednesday, my, my report goes out every Wednesday. Last Wednesday was a little while, because I had all kinds of appointments pop up. And so... You know, I was like, it was really getting down. It was like four o'clock and I still had like, a lot of people had to call back and deals I'm negotiating. And I'm like, ah, oh. but I made it happen. And it went out at like 5.15 or something, right? So to answer your question, you just make it happen. I mean, it's that simple. I mean, this stuff is really more simple than you think. Okay. Yep. How many admin people do you have? One. One. Uh, she's an absolute animal. <laughs> she's a beast. So, uh, yes, sir. Just to follow up on this young man's question. Yes, sir. When you say, how can I help you today and what can I do for you? Yes, sir. It comes across as really 
being genuine and authentic and yes, out the box. So how do you really handle if someone's like, okay, well, I need my garage clean, something off the wall or something non-related to uh, real estate, yeah. you know, because I think I would have a problem with people, I'm a pretty nice fella, you yeah. know, taking advantage of my time. And yeah. I know you say time is the most important thing. So yeah. how do we, as professionals, draw the line, so to speak, yeah. with that? I think establish yourself as the real estate agent, not the contractor, right? I think that that's a big like part of it is people know you're a real estate agent and not a contractor, and so they draw a line a little bit and sand their self about that. But I do get uh, people to ask to ask me stuff kind of off the wall. I have contractors that you know I'll say, oh, I'll call so and so, and I'll just refer it to somebody. You know, if it's a garage guy or uh, a uh, uh, they want their house clean, they need something painted, they need floor redone or whatever. I have people in place, I've got contractors that will do that kind of stuff and I'll just pass their number along. Okay. Now I'm out of it. The problem with it is, is if you refer them to somebody who does a really bad job mm -hmm. and now it's kind of like it's back on you. Mm -hmm. So if I don't have anybody, I'll literally tell them, hey, I don't have anybody for that. I'm sorry. I can't help you with that. So there have been moments like there was, there have been plenty of windows of time where I didn't have a contractor that I felt good about. And so if there was somebody that needed flooring or something done, I couldn't refer them to anybody. And I would just tell them, hey, I, I don't have anybody. And it, here's the thing, when you're honest, they appreciate that. Like the fact that you didn't give them somebody, right, doesn't really matter if you're not giving them somebody because, hey, I don't, I don't feel good about anybody. I wouldn't feel good about giving you anybody. So, and they're like, okay, yeah, please don't give me anybody if you don't feel good about them. See what I'm saying? But on the flip side, when I do feel good about somebody, I say, listen, I don't refer people unless I feel super good that they're going to take care of you the way that I would take care of you if I were in that business. So I'm going to refer this person to you. So you just say no when you got to say no and you never put your reputation on the line as much as you can. Even if you refer somebody you feel good about and they do a bad job, you felt good about them, but they did a bad job. That's not a good situation to be in. So you got to be careful, right? Yes, ma'am. Where do you get the numbers, and what is the best time of the day to make the call? RedX, theredx.com. If you call them and tell them I sent you, they'll waive the $150 startup fee and get geo leads. And geo leads, you put an address in the bar, and then it'll find up to 300 addresses, I mean, phone numbers of the owners around that address. It'll find 25, 50, 100, 200, 300, or I don't know, the different tiers. But it's $50 a month. And it finds them in a split second. You put a you put a you put a, a address in, and it finds 300 <coughs> owners numbers around that address. You just click a button, and boom, they're right there. Can you repeat that? TheRedX.com. Who said that? Yeah, TheRedX.com. And if you call them and tell them I sent you, they'll waive the $150 startup fee. And then you can just start paying 50 a month and get G all you need is geo leads. They have a dialer. You can use their dialer if you want, or you can use Mojo's dialer. Or you can call them from your cell phone. Jalen? Hmm? You said Geo, G E O? Geo, yeah, 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 G E O, yeah, Geo, like geographical, like Geo Leads. It's Geo Leads. Yeah, it, it, it is awesome because a lot of the numbers, not a lot, some of them are cell phone numbers. The quality of the numbers that it finds is the best, and I've used everything. The only thing I hadn't really used is coal resources, if anybody's ever tried that, but uh, I don't know how good their quality is, but I've tried a lot of them, and this one is really, really good. Yeah. And they've already been screwed up against the Do Not Call list? They, they, they make a note next to it, mm -hmm. DNC, and so some of them say DNC next to it, and that's Do Not Call, so if you're against doing that, I don't really care. Is it for, so is it? As far as the do not call list, do they already scrub it for you? Yeah, they scrub it. They have it labeled there next to it. <coughs> so it's um, for the... F okay. they don't, I mean, they don't yeah, scrub too. it. Like, it's still there. You can still call it, yeah. but it's just labeled DNC. Yes, ma'am. What would be the your requirement for the a seller on the phone that says they already have an agent that they might work with that is willing to do it for 1%. 1%? Yes. I would tell them good luck. These are agents, these are agents that um, are about the quantity, not the quality. Is this a, is this a, like a Redfin or a, 
One of those tech technology based? No, actually it's not. Um, yeah. Just some agents I know in the market here because the market. Well, here's the thing on discount brokers. Let them go use them and find out how horrible the service is. So is that what you would say to them? Yeah. <laughs> go use them, find out how horrible the service is, and then I'll see you in a month. <laughs> right? Here's the thing too. Like like the discount brokers, um, like like okay, they're gonna sell their house through the discount broker, right? But then they're gonna buy a house, right? So if you do your job and don't make it a big thing and get mad at them for using somebody else, maybe you still get the sale when they buy. So it doesn't matter because you're not trying to do the deal. You're trying to help them, and if they feel like that's what's best for them, I want them to go there. And you go do that, now I have extra time on my hands because you went there, I'm going to go spend my time on these people that pay me 3%, right? And I'm going to help you when you buy something because you love me because I didn't get mad at you because you went to a discount broker, right? That's how you handle it. But the, at the, the bottom line, they're going to come back to you. Most of them that use discount brokers find out the service is not where it needs to be and it's definitely not what I'm going to give them. And so they find out I'm worth my money. Some of them don't care about the service. They'd rather sacrifice money for service and for those guys. That's fine too. There's unlimited deals for everybody. Like it's unlimited as much as you can handle your cup. Like there's, you, your cup's always full. Who cares if something spills over? Yeah. How do you handle overpriced listings? Overpriced listings? Yeah. I try to set the expectation with the seller. Hey, it's not gonna be shown at all probably. It's not gonna sell. Um, you need to be here. I try to get them down, or at least get them down as low as I can. And just make them understand that this is going to be tough, probably not going to happen. And then, but I then I do list it if they want to, even though they if they understand that and they're good with it and they still want to list it, I'm going to list it because I again don't care about the deal. I want to do what's best for them. And so what happens is it's a very cool thing. Listings I think will never sell, sell in a day. And listings I think will never will sell in a day, never sell. Right. So like I, I listed one for five fifty. A month or two ago, last sales 485, and I tell the seller, I'm like, never gonna happen. It's just you're just crazy, right? But I sold her the condo for like 460 two years ago, and she's like, this is just what I'm like, okay, cool, let's do it or whatever. Sold her for 530, closing on it in a couple weeks. Something I thought would never sell. So here's the thing: you're not the real estate god of pricing, right? Buyers are. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't set the prices just because you. You know, what makes you the god of pricing? Like what, you, you, you look at the comps and now, oh, that's what it is because Ricky said so. No, actually the person that's gonna buy it will set that price and you don't know what that price is. And so what happens is a really cool thing. You overprice it, then the market catches up a little and the seller reduces a little. Now we're, now we're close in three months or a year or two years. I have listings for two years that sell because I, over, I overpriced it but I stayed in touch with the seller because I, I, I didn't care about it not, not being shown. I cared about maintaining that relationship so they just let me keep the listing. It sells in two years, all right? So concentrate on the relationship, not the deal. You, you speak a lot to listings and prospecting not listings and relationship yeah. listings. Do you work with a lot of buyers? Tons of buyers, 50-50 this year okay. so far buyers. My buyers come from property owners. That's my source of buyers. Zero buyer leads. Zero whatever buyer lead they I don't do any of that. I concentrate on the property owners for my buyers and my sellers. It's the most efficient way to work, right? They're dual. They can buy or sell or both. And they're unlimited. You can't call them all in your area. I mean, this is this is like the biggest county in this side of the equator. Like you'll never call every single one of them. So it's unlimited. So you have an unlimited amount of prospects that buy and sell. Why would you even talk to a buyer lead? Right? Unless they're a seller too, right? But there's people that crush with the buyer leads and I, and I love them for it, right? Um, but I feel like the most efficient way to do it is to build long-term relationships with property owners who buy and sell. So like I say, my ratio this year is 50-50. Is there a reason why you send your emails out on Wednesdays? No, you can send them out any day of the week you want. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, it doesn't matter. What matters is that whatever day you pick, you stay with that forever. That's all that matters. They want to see consistency. 
How are you going to stand out in the market? Because they got that email from you for five years every single Tuesday, every single Thursday. That's how you're going to stand out. And that's why they're going to pick you because of that. Yes, Do you need anything different to break into the higher uh, priced market? Yeah, just start calling higher priced property. Owners. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say anything different to them? No, ma'am. I wouldn't say anything different to them. I wouldn't say anything different to an expired, a for sale by owner, a buyer lead, or any of them. I would say, hey, this is Ricky Crew, three XRFPs. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm enjoying the weather. Isn't it gorgeous outside? Hey, yeah. Well, look, I don't take it too much time today, but I saw you looking at something online. I saw your house expired. Uh, I see you have this property. Is there anything I can do to help you? It's the same exact script. That's why I love my script because it's interchangeable with really not only all the different avenues of real estate, but really business in general. You really use it for anything. It's building relationships, and it's not going for the kill. You know, it's loosening them up, reading them, what's going on with them today, and then respecting their time, giving them market info, and find out what you can do to help them. Same thing. Yes, sir. Uh, two questions. One, how do I get that five-minute conversation with you? And what's that? That five-minute conversation with you. Uh -huh. And uh, how do we get into your coaching? Zero to diamond.com. You just go there, it's free, you just sign up. Hundred percent. Five minute conversation. You can call me anytime. All right. All, my business cards are on the table back there. You guys can grab one and call me anytime, email me, text me, whatever me. Anything else, guys? Yes, sir? Your farm area, is it just the county that you're in or he, uh, he's asking my farm area if it's just the county I am or what. Um, my county is like you guys, it's pretty big. So there's a whole other world on the north side of our county. Uh, the south side of our county is the beach and Gulf Shores, Orange Beach and all that. I, I grew up in Orange Beach, Gulf Shores, went to Gulf Shores Elementary and Foley High School. So Foley, Gulf Shores, Orange Beach is kind of like the same area to us locals. And then when you get into Florida, it's Perdido Key. I've got my Florida license. So I could actually, I could actually just move down here and start crushing you guys right now. <laughs> but, uh, but, but anyway, I, there, there's so many condos on the beach, you know, and houses right across. So and that's where my office is, and that's where I grew up right there. So I just kind of focus on the beach in terms of my farming. Now I'll sell commercial lots, apartment complexes, houses. I sell it all just from being in the business and people seeing me and coming to me and stuff. But as far as my farming prospecting efforts, I really want to be, you know mid to high end go front right across the street you know that kind of thing i really enjoyed this guys <laughs> <laughs>